Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over a proof of the intersecting secants theorem. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. We begin, of course, by stating the intersecting secants theorem. It's a theorem that tells us about the situation where we have two secants of a circle intersecting at a point outside the circle. Now let me label all of these intersection points. We'll call this one P, this one A, this one B, this one C, and this one lowercase w. No, just kidding, we'll call it D. Then, in this situation, with secants intersecting at a point outside of the circle, the intersecting secants theorem tells us that the length of the segment PA multiplied by the length of the segment PB is equal to the length of the segment PC multiplied by the length of the segment PD. So it says this whole part times this external part is equal to this whole part times this external part. And you might notice that this equality is equivalent to this other equality, that the length of the segment PA divided by the length of the segment PC is equal to the length of the segment PD divided by the length of the segment PB. So we can get from here to here just by dividing both sides of this equation by PB and dividing both sides by PC. And remember that when we have the name of a line segment inside vertical bars, that's referring to the length of the line segment. All right, so here we have two equivalent statements, proving either one will do just fine. This is the one we're really interested in, but if we can prove this one, we'll be able to get to this in one step, just having to do some multiplication. So then we should be thinking, what things do we know that involve multiplying or dividing the length of line segments? Well, when I see an equality like this equating ratios of the lengths of line segments, the first thing that comes to my mind is similar triangles. It's possible that maybe by drawing an extra segment or two, we could use a similar triangle argument to prove that the ratio of this side to this side is equal to the ratio of this side to this side. So if we're going to use triangles, we know that we want PA and PB to both be sides of a triangle. But they can't be sides of the same triangle because there's no angle between them. Same thing for PC and PD. These are segments we're interested in, so we want them to be in our triangles, but PC and PD can't be in the same triangle. So to get all the segments we want involved, we're going to need two triangles. But that's fine, because we were going to need two triangles anyways to make a similar triangle argument. Then we have two options. The first option is that we could put both of these shorter sides into a triangle, and we could put both of these longer sides into the other triangle, which would look like this. But in my opinion, the easiest way to prove that two triangles are similar is by finding congruencies between two pairs of their angles. So since we want our proof to be as easy and simple as possible, the first thing I'm looking for here are angle congruencies between these two triangles. And none are jumping out at me as easy congruencies to prove, except for this one at angle P, because angle P is an angle of both triangles. But one angle congruency isn't enough. So for now, I'm going to abandon these two triangles and look at the other option. The other option is to put one short segment and one long segment into one triangle, and then put the other short segment and the other long segment into the other triangle. So that's what we've done here with these two triangles. And I'm going to draw a little purple dotted line here so you can see that these triangles are intersecting a little bit. So then I'm looking at these two triangles and wondering where can I find some congruent angles. Again, the angle P is an angle of both triangles, and it's congruent to itself, so that's an easy one. I'll put it down with a black marker. But then I see there's another easy pair of congruent angles here. The angle B is congruent to the angle D. This is because they are both inscribed angles of the same circle that cut the exact same arc. Inscribed angles of a circle are just angles whose vertices are on the circle. So these are two inscribed angles that cut this minor arc AC. Since they're inscribed in the same circle and cut the same arc, they are congruent angles. 
So I'll mark them with this brown marker, sort of color coding the angle congruencies here. So we've got that angle P of the orange triangle is congruent to angle P of the purple triangle by the reflexive property. Of course, the angle is congruent to itself. Then we also have that angle B of the orange triangle is congruent to angle D of the purple triangle because they're inscribed angles cutting the same arc. Then you might remember that if we have two pairs of congruent angles between two triangles, then the third pair also has to be congruent. So that means angle A of the purple triangle is congruent to angle C of the orange triangle. And I'll mark them with this sort of greenish color. So angle C of the orange triangle is congruent to angle A of the purple triangle. Now, since we've shown that these two triangles have congruent angles, that means they have to be similar triangles. We could have concluded that as soon as we found two pairs of congruent angles by the angle-angle triangle similarity postulate. But I like to be thorough, so I figured we'd mention that third angle as well. So now we know the triangles are similar. We can write that triangle PBC is similar to triangle PDA. Notice that we write these triangles in a way to make sure that the angles match up. Angle P congruent to angle P. Angle B congruent to angle D. Angle C congruent to angle A. Now once we've got similar triangles, we can start talking about ratios between corresponding sides. The first side we're interested in is PA, this short side here of the purple triangle. Looking over here at our triangle similarity, we can tell that the side PA corresponds to the side PC. So we'll write this over here. The length of PA divided by the length of PC. The reason we're putting them in this ratio is so we can set it equal to another ratio of corresponding sides. So PA in the purple triangle divided by PC in the orange triangle, what's that equal to? Well, the other side of the purple triangle that we're interested in is PD. And looking at our triangle similarity, we can see that the side PD corresponds to the side PB, which means that this ratio of PA to PC is equal to the ratio of PD to PB. And remember that since we put the side of the purple triangle in the numerator here on the left side, we also have to put the side length of the purple triangle in the numerator on the right side. So from similar triangles, we were able to conclude this. Then all we have to do to get from this equality to this equality is multiply both sides of this equation by PC and multiply both sides of the equation by PB. And then that is going to give us that PA multiplied by PB is equal to PD multiplied by PC, just like we wanted. And notice that the order PD and PC are multiplied in does not matter. And remember, to get from here to here, all we had to do was multiply both sides of the equation by PC and both sides by PB, which gets rid of these denominators and leaves us with this beautiful equality, which is what we wanted from the start. So that's how you prove the intersecting secants theorem. We construct two more segments in our diagram so that we can consider two different triangles. By the angle-angle triangle similarity postulate, we're quickly able to conclude that these triangles are similar. They have one shared angle, which is of course congruent to itself, and then they each have an inscribed angle that cuts the exact same arc. Then we can write this triangle similarity statement, and we know which point of one triangle corresponds to which point of the other triangle, since we identified their congruent angles. Then with that information, we're able to identify corresponding sides to get this equality because the ratios of corresponding sides of similar triangles are equal. Then with a little bit of multiplication, we get the statement we want. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove the intersecting secants theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. If I could come this moment It'd be so perfect Cause there would be no past or future I'd never need to doubt